All right, guys. So Bloomhouse has just announced they're no longer going to just make horror movies. Now, they're also going to be making horror video games. So in case anyone is unaware, if you're a fan of any sort of B-rated horror movies, you've probably seen a ton of Bloomhouse films. You'll see a flying chair and all sorts of stuff going on in the background whenever one of their movies starts up. From Blackbone to The Purge, boy, have they made a ton of stuff. By the way, if you haven't seen The Purge Anarchy, I would highly recommend it. It's basically what would happen if you took the Walmart version of Punisher and put him in the Purge universe. It's actually pretty good. So Bloomhouse is going to be working with any developers or smallest, smaller studios and give them up to a $10 million budget. That's just kind of insane when you think about it, that the fact that $10 million is considered indie in the modern era. So I'm actually pretty excited about this. Overall, I think the horror genre has been carried by indie and double A games for the past decade. I know recently we've kind of had an upkick of horror games with the Dead Space remake and Resident Evil making a comeback, but for the longest time, the indie scene kind of carried the genre. So it's nice to see that these guys are kind of getting a handout and hopefully we get some new fresh ideas going forward. And this is not just a pipe dream. Bloomhouse is actually bringing in some veterans from the gaming world to lead the division. Zach Wood will be the president and Don Sinclair as the CFO. So really quick as a side note, I'm not gonna lie. I did some research on these guys for this video. And when I Googled Zach Woods, this came up and I got overly excited. I was like, Gabe from The Office is gonna make horror games? That's awesome. Think of all the cool jokes and all the puns you can make. And then I realized I'm just a moron. And I typed in Woods instead of Wood. This is actually Zach Wood. And while he may not be from The Office, he does have a pretty extensive track record. This guy has been around the block when it comes to games, having worked with some major publishers such as Sony and Bethesda. So yes, he's done some pretty impressive stuff and his resume is not totally green. He's actually a well-known veteran in the industry. As for Don Sinclair, well, he worked as, as Sony as Vice President of Global Head of Business Operations, Planning and Strategy. He joined the team at Sony in 2013 and he helped them kind of reform the culture at PlayStation when working with third-party creators. So it's nice to see that these guys have been around the block, have experience working with third-party developers, since that's what they're going to be doing at Bloomhouse. This could be actually pretty cool for horror fans, as it seems like Bloomhouse will give a smaller studio a chance at getting their game published with upcoming new horror ideas. And as for the marketing, Bloomhouse could just market the start of their movie. After all, they're the company, and it'd be free marketing for this developer, and Bloomhouse won't have to pay up the rear to, to, to get marketing done for their video game. Since most horror fans probably watch horror movies, and play horror games and if you watch horror movies you've definitely seen Bloomhouse movies because they pump out a ton of them a year so don't get me wrong this obviously won't lead to the next big triple a blockbuster but who knows after all most iconic horror franchises start out a smaller budget janky title both resident evil and silent hill began with a niche audience in mind and grew into the juggernauts they are today. So who knows what new franchises may come from this. Overall, this is very exciting. I love horror games and I actually don't mind smaller budget games. Sometimes a game with some jank but a ton of creativity or just a game that knows its target audience is more fun than a big budget title trying to appease the masses. Overall, I think this is very exciting. I love horror games and I actually don't mind smaller budget titles. Sometimes a game with some jank but a ton of creativity or just a game that knows its audience is more fun than a big budget studio producing a game that tries to appease the masses. One example of this was Amnesia The Dark Descent. It released in 2010 to get amazing reviews and got a ton of praise and it really did take the horror scene by storm. The game had a development cost of just under $400,000 so way under the 10 million mark. Now I know what you're thinking. The game came out in 2010 and inflation has raised the cost of everything. Well, even if we take inflation into account, develop, the total development cost would have been just under $500,000. By the way, if this math is wrong, please don't destroy me in the comments. 
I'm just using an online calculator after all. I'm just some random dude on the internet making videos about video games. I'm not a mathematician. And yes, I know Amnesia is basically a walking simulator. But the time it came out, it was really great. It basically came out before all the walking simulators took over that trope of the horror game scene. But this could lead to other great horror games or horror themed games as well. Games like Darkwood or Hollow Knight or Tormented Souls, or how about Signalis? Sometimes these smaller budget games just offer something you cannot find anywhere else. I know, I know, these games are over the map when it comes to the horror scene, but look how Bloomhouse handles their movies. Obviously, they're open to a wide variety of different horror type of movies, and I'm sure if they handle the gaming situation the same way, we'll get a massive variety of horror games from them as well. Just look at Vampire Survivors. That game basically came out of nowhere and took the gaming world by storm. So you never know when one of these lower budget games will just strike gold and capture lightning in a bottle. Honestly, if I was able to get a publishing from Bloomhouse, I would try to get Zach Woods to play the killer. Think about it. He'd run around in a hockey mask with a saber and killing anyone that misses pronounces saber. It's not saber. It's Sabre. It's Sabre. I'd probably die because I mispronounced the weapon. So yeah, I'd, I'd probably be a bit dumb. Yeah, I know that sounds stupid, but let's be real. It sounds way better than Halloween's end was. So at least I beat them in that part. So suck it, Hollywood. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please just consider subscribing. I got a ton of more stuff in the works that I love to share with you all. Also, leave a comment down below. Let me know, are you excited about this? Are you ready to see what great new indie horror games could come out of this deal? Or could you care less? I think it will just lead to a bunch of poor graphics and janky garbage. Let me know in the comments down below. As for me, I got a ton of work to do, so I got to get back to the grind and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.